Well, Corey here with Toothless Reptiles in San Diego. Um, I wanted to talk to you for a second about uh, internet beefs. Okay? Um, I think it's important for everybody to kind of understand where all this stuff comes from. Um, and to be honest, it usually has nothing to do with me. And uh, most of the time, actually, it has nothing to do with the uh, counterpart to that beef as well. Um, at least not to, in a personal sense. But um, one statistic you want to keep in mind is that social media has a large following, but not a large engagement. So you have 80% of all social media engagement, which includes posts and comments, those are coming from 2% of social media users. So, you have the overwhelming minority of people on social media that are actually engaging in social media. So, you end up with uh, an echo chamber, especially in the reptile forums, uh, because those forums are obviously created by a lot of the people um, who are on the other end of the beefs, and they regulate the kinds of posts that people can put on them. So it becomes an echo chamber, and it's constantly kind of uh, reassuring your opinion and validating your opinions. Um, and they do that on purpose. Now, most of us that are actually busy partaking in the reptile trade or being successful in the reptile trade don't have time to worry about the internet. <laughs> so, um, I want to throw another stat at you as well. So, not really a statistics num numerical value, but just some information that would kind of put some things in perspective. Over the last few years, I have been very successful with the monitor breeding. Um, arguably uh, more successful than a, a lot of people who have been in doing this for a much longer time. And uh, I have given back to the reptile community in a few different ways. Um, kind of coming up with a candling method for monitor lizards, which people were obviously saying couldn't be done. Um, also the x-ray method, which I posted tons of stuff about because I'm constantly in contact with my local vet, Jeff Jenkins. So I post all of those x-rays so people can further their understanding of sexing adult animals via x-ray. Um, I've also funded many, many thousands of dollars, more than $10,000, into a DNA project at Therion DNA, where we develop all of our own primers um, and alleles for testing water monitors, lace monitors, croc monitors. You can test Komodensis monitors, which are the Komodo dragons. Um, and you are allowed to send in samples there to get tested now. Um, which has all been posted. I've also done a hybrid project between the Salvatore and Salvadori, which all has DNA testing and a full study, which was proofed and written by a biologist, is on our website, which is actually supposed to be published um, beginning of next year into a uh, very popular magazine. And um, I have also bred and hatched lace monitors Bell's face and normal face. I have produced the largest clutches of black dragons on record, 20 plus eggs of fertile black dragons from a single female. My breeding population is a single breeding pair of rock monitors, a single breeding pair of lace monitors, and a single breeding pair of black dragons. And yet I have produced more of all of those species in the last few years than any number of my competitors has with many, many females and males in what I would consider to be subpar conditions. Now, 
I have also successfully bred and produced fertile croc monitor eggs, which uh, is a huge achievement. And by all rights, I have done every single thing I have set out to do in the last few years that I have put the time into it. And how did I do that while having zero contact with the so-called experts in my field? You gotta wonder how that happens. It's because the so-called experts in my field that are on the internet trying to drag down a floating man because they're drowning are stunting your growth as reptile keepers on the internet. Now, they have invested interest in doing this, obviously, because they run these things uh, as a business. And honestly, you can, there's proof in that fact in the way that they take care of their animals. They can't invest a bunch of money into an animal or into an enclosure like this um, because they need to be able to see that as a return on the back end. Now for me, I am one of you guys. I am just a reptile hobbyist. I do not do this for a living. Which has allowed me to advance the reptile keeping field greatly over the last few years. I also don't keep secrets. So, my videos on YouTube are everything I think you need to know in order to breed salvators. Um, and that is exactly how I breed salvators. I don't keep any of that as a secret from you guys. And if you guys have been in contact with some of these so-called experts for however long you have, and you have not been successful in your projects of breeding, I would wonder why that is. If you're that much of an expert in your field, you should be able to teach someone else how to be successful in the field that you are an expert in, okay? Um, with that said, breeding water monitors is super easy. There are a couple of condition requirements they have. If you meet those requirements and feed them well, um, they breed. My females put out a clutch of eggs, 20 plus eggs, every two and a half to three months. And I don't do anything special to make that happen. Their conditions are just consistent and that's it. Um, with the lace monitors, I brought that female lace in to the same conditions that I had set up for the crocs and they bred and in four months of having the lace that had been in captivity for a number of years and had not produced I produced a clutch of five fertile lace eggs, and those eggs just hatched, as you saw, and they were extremely high quality lace animals. They don't have a lot of banding in the white bands, um, uh, which is another reason why my animals fly off the shelves. I do not keep stock. Um, I sell out all of my animals before they're even ready to ship. Um, a lot of times I sell out the black dragons before they even hatch. And um, that's all a testament to the way that I do things here. Hey girl, I have the female croc in your lay box right now. <laughs> but um, then you have people, you know, like the so-called experts um, that are trying to sell uh, Bell's Face animals that look rather poorly uh, for $7,500 on their website, which I would value at our lowest price point at $5,000 for a Bell's Face. Um, so we are effectively selling our, our nicest, which are still not A plus grade, but they're probably A minus grade. Um, an A plus grade, you generally would only get with the Bells to Bells breeding. Um, an A minus grade, we got, um, simply by luck. I honestly didn't think the animals were going to come out like that, but it, it does kind of tell me that maybe the normal female that we have came from a Bells to normal breeding. Um, and I'm not sure how the genetics work there either. Nobody really knows for sure. I believe the Bells is somewhat of a co-dominant gene. Um, so, it's, uh, we ended up with some really high quality animals, which 
is really cool, and we have such a big following on social media that uh, everything was really successful as far as selling the clutch. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that, you know, if you're in the break room at Nerd, or you're on the forums that Nerd has, or you're, you know, you're on their page, or it's really easy to think in this little atmosphere that you're working within that these things are big deals. Um, full disclosure, I have never spoken to Kevin on the phone ever. I mean, in reality, I have never spoken to Kevin ever, period. I think he messaged me one time on Cyber Salvatore um, on the actual forum, not a personal message, and uh, asking me about the DNA testing, which I was happy to give him the information on, and then that was pretty much it. Um, I only have my personal business Instagram, my personal business Facebook, and then my personal Facebook page. That is the extent of my social media involvement. There is no equity to gain in involving myself any further outside of those things. Um, as far as what I'm doing, what I need from you guys is support. I'm usually financial, obviously, because I do sell the animals, but more than that, I always reply to everybody's messages. I always take time out of my day, um, and that is a testament to the fact that I don't do this for a living, and I am not an expert. I would absolutely never consider myself an expert in reptile keeping, um, no matter what I ever did. And um, just because there is a stigma attached to that, um, especially now, given the issues that we have with experts in our field. And um, I just don't want the, the, you know, the stigma attached to it. I do this stuff for fun, and I think it should be fun for you guys. And um, there is zero fun associated with getting involved outside my lines. Um, uh, in the reptile trade, as people like to call it. Um, I have done all this stuff without the negative Nancy's input. So I don't need it. You guys don't need me. If you want a quality animal, you're welcome to buy one. But as far as information, I have read and gone through all of the information on the internet, multiple books, everything over the last 17 years of, you know, keeping the large uh, reptiles. Um, and I also grew up in the animal trade. I mean, we used to rescue possums for Project Wildlife when I was a kid. So um, I've always been involved in animals as it is, but um, I think it's important to realize that, you know, obviously the people that are gonna, you know, talk shit on the internet are gonna talk shit on the internet. Um, but the more time they're spending on the internet, the less time they're devoting to their animals, which is kind of counteractive to the whole reason you're supposedly on the internet, right? Um, also, if you're spending an arm and a leg for an animal and you can look at a breeder's enclosures and think that you could have that same enclosure in a one bedroom apartment, then you have to wonder where that money's going, right? So it's obviously not going to the animals, and to be honest, uh, in my opinion, I am doing very little. The animals are doing everything. I don't deserve credit for my animals breeding. You know, I put in the work and give them the proper conditions, which is my job as a keeper anyway, regardless of whether I was trying to breed or not. The animals happen to breed and produce, and it's really cool, and I get some recognition for that um, as a keeper. But I'm not doing anything special. The animals are doing what they're naturally meant to do. I mean, you would, you could argue that the animals are programmed to do that at least, um, because obviously reproduction and the driving of their species on planet Earth is number one priority for any animal species ever, um, including human beings, obviously. So if your animals aren't breeding or producing, you could argue that that is a sign of bad health, bad keeping. Same thing if your animals are producing small clutches based on their size, that is a testament to malnutrition. So if, and, and to be honest, 
it's kind of a catch-22 because we don't know how much these animals are eating outside of here. We don't know a lot about their health, you know, as far as longevity. Um, there's a lot of unknowns with the animals. But on the flip side, you as a breeder know if you're doing everything or you're not doing everything. I mean, it's real easy to tell. I, I on the other hand, on other hand, I do all this stuff by myself. Um, I have little involvement from some other people who bring animals in, but aside from the day-to-day -day and all the work and interacting with the animals, that is me by myself alone. So I put it all on myself to take care of these animals, and that helps me have total control over their environment and how they feed, how they act. I can pick up on whether there's issues, whether there's not issues. I know whether, by the way, an animal's feeding, if maybe one of her heat lamps went out, because these are huge enclosures. The enclosure that I'm in right now is over 3,000 cubic feet. It's almost uh, the average size of a New York apartment. So, <laughs> so um, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those things where you kind of got to take it out of a grain of salt. Um, these people that have beefs with me are more than welcome to call. I'd be happy to talk to them. I can guarantee you anything that they're saying online definitely hasn't been proven out of my results because I have been very successful over the last few years. And I think more than anything what bothers the other experts in the field is that somebody came in and kind of outdid them with much less and much less experience. Um, and all that is attributed to is me taking good care of the animals, which I should be doing anyway, and me making the investment in the animal instead of the investment in the project, okay? It is real easy to say that I'm going to breed water monitors and for me to invest in the project, meaning I'm gonna buy 10 water monitors, bring them in, put them in closets, and just see if I can make babies. And I'm hoping by the logic of numbers that I will be successful. It's just the wrong way to do it. In any ethical means, it's just the wrong way to do it. Um, I don't agree with that method. Um, I never have agreed with that method. And obviously the animals don't agree with that method either in the fact that I've been very successful over the last few years um, with all of my projects. And um, the fact that those projects are whittled down to a single female and a single male for each project. Um, I have brought in more animals to see which animals get along. And if you prioritize the animal, the animal will prioritize reproduction. And in prioritizing reproduction, they are prioritizing yourself as a breeder and your way to gain equity from the projects that you have invested in. So um, it is, uh, I don't know, the, the funniest thing about all this <laughs> internet stuff is that I literally have no clue about <laughs> any of it. And yet um, people will ask me about specific instances of things that I'm like, I've never even heard of that. I have no idea <laughs> what you're talking about. Um, which is just, uh, you know, in incredible to me in its worst way. Um, it's also uh, kind of discrediting to the people with these beefs uh, that it's obviously a one-sided issue. My phone is always, you know, on 619-549-1508. You're welcome to call and ask me um, if I said something out of color that you didn't agree with. You're welcome to call and ask me about it. I have no problem speaking to anybody. Kevin McCurley, if you want to call me, I'd be happy to talk to you. It's not a big deal. I have no ill will towards you or your company. Um, you know, uh, any of these people. I mean, honestly, the only person I've ever spoken to at Nerd was Josh Ortiz, and we obviously have a uh, outstanding business relationship now. Um, I've never had a problem with him or the way he's done business. Um, very cool guy, which is a testament to why he's probably not at Nerd anymore. Um, so, uh, it's just, uh, it is what it is. You gotta, gotta take this stuff with a grain of salt and kind of do your own background checking, but 
Um, to be fair, all of these companies that are having issues or whatever, they are small businesses. You know, uh, Nerd included, all these other reptile companies, they are small businesses. They have, by definition, they are small businesses. You know, they are your local copy shop, you know. Um, regardless of their presence on the internet, uh, which I would, I would virtue to say, venture to say that, uh, you know, most of the people on the internet that are repeating some of these things probably aren't monitor keepers, or um, at the very least could not afford a monitor from a uh, nerd, which is, you know, no knock on them, but I'm just saying uh, the next best thing to getting involved in high-end reptile keeping is to be a keyboard warrior for high-end reptile keeping when you can't afford the reptiles yourself, right? Um, also, because as the person who's going on the internet and just regurgitating a lot of this information that is bad, um, you are obviously not willing to invest your own money into this information that you are pushing because you don't own an animal to be able to go through the trials and tribulations of trying to care for an animal using this said information uh, to guarantee the health of your investment. So. Um, I, on the other hand, am uh, more than happy to talk to anybody, even if they haven't bought an animal from me. Um, anyone will attest to that. Um, I've only had maybe two or three issues with people in my entire animal keeping, um, animal keeping, uh, you know, lineage, I guess you could say. But um, and they were always uh, an issue of me being uh, too nice and too trustful, and then I had to kind of cut ties. Um, that was it, you know. Um, I'm not going out after anybody. Uh, there is no, uh, there is a zero sum equity in uh, doing that stuff, especially when there's no money to be had. Um, the internet is not a court of law. Uh, you can go online and complain and all that stuff, and if it makes you feel better, have at it. I'm not going to partake in it. Um, but it's just, um, it's one of those things where. You know, no matter what's going on on the internet, and 100% uh, of you guys will agree, that that stuff that's going on on the internet can only negatively affect your reptile keeping. I know that if I'm in a bad mood, I spend less time with my animals. I will feed them quicker because I need uh, to go do something else. Um, and I like to use my animals as my uh, for lack of a better term, uh, a daily reprieve, if you will. Um, it reminds me that, uh, you know, these animals have simple needs and I am their only refuge. I give them food, I give them water, I take care of them. Without me, these animals would stay in this building and starve to death. Um, so there's a very real reality uh, in here that regardless of what's going on on the internet, I still have stuff I have to do. I still have to thaw chicks and bring chicks out here and feed the animals. I still have to backwash the pond filter. I still have to check all their temps with the probe. I still have to keep an eye on their misting system to make sure the timer's dialed in with their hygrometer graph. Um, stuff like that. Um, I, I would, uh, if I could give you guys one piece of advice for the people that are uh, online kind of, you know, following the trend or just kind of falling in line behind uh, the next bit of drama that goes down the line. Um, I would just say that there is always more you can do for your monitors, and not all of it is expensive. You can buy wireless hygrometers for $30 on Amazon, and it will tell you your humidity and everything graphed out for a month, a week, a day, um, and uh, you know, and then you can build a misting system and research a misting system. I mean, God knows I spend a lot of time researching online, um, and. Uh, and uh, most of the time it has nothing to do with monitors specifically, it has to do with an issue I'm having and then uh, a means to, you know, solve that issue, uh, to mitigate that issue. So, um, you know, when I was having issues with humidity, I didn't look up reptile misting systems, I just looked up misting systems. And then I looked up misting nozzles. And then I found some misting nozzles that ran on 30 PSI because I know that I can get 30 PSI at least out of a normal home water system. Water systems of your house are usually 60 to 70 or so PSI. So if you regulate that down to 30, I now have a misting system. Now my next issue was uh, my misting system was having to run so often to keep the humidity up that the temperatures were dropping because the water was cold. 
not a problem. I figured out how many gallons per hour my misters, my misters were working, multiplied that by how many misters I had, found a water heater that would heat that much volume so that way it could stay on for the whole duration and not end up with a cold spot. And, um, you know, I figured all that stuff out. This is stuff that I didn't learn from a monitor expert. You don't need to learn it from a lizard expert or a reptile expert. You don't need to learn it from me. You just need to do your due diligence and go online and look the stuff up and do your research. Um, I get uh, messages from people who on one side will ask me about something that I have no idea about uh, thinking that because it's such a big deal in their little world that obviously I know about it, right? Um, which is totally untrue. <laughs> so, um, and then on the flip side, they'll ask me how much an animal is when it's literally posted on my last post. Um, or posted on our website. Or, uh, you know, uh, stuff like that. Where it's kind of like, how do you know about you know, the issues that so-and-so is having with so-and-so, but you don't know the basic stuff, which is literally right in front of you. And that's kind of the thing where you can't see the forest through the trees um, issue. And that comes up uh, actually a lot. And it's uh, kind of hard to have patience with people like that, but I do. Um, and um, I would just say, you know, it, it's... Uh, you, get, you can get whatever you want out of the information, out of the internet. The confirmation bias is there. Uh, the constant, you know, reinforcement of negative ideas is there. If you look for it, you will find it. I mean, there are flat earthers. There are people who think the Holocaust never happened. If you, for some reason, think that what you're reading on the internet is fact just because it happened to fall into an ideology that you already were pre-exposed to before having read that information, don't do that. You got to get away from that and do your own research. You know, these are the Fox News people. That, you know, Fox News' demographic is 65 years old on average. So you got to figure they're catering to their, catering to their demo. Everybody else is a byproduct of their catered demo. So, um, you know, hey girl. Um, but as far as toothless reptiles, we are doing really, really good. Um, I don't have any issues with anyone that I know of. Uh, I haven't heard from anyone about anything. I haven't, I have no idea what's going on out there. I have no clue. Um, to be honest, the reptiles are something I do for fun. I have other hobbies that are just as much fun, if not more fun. Um, I have done everything that I have wanted to do in the reptile uh, breeding. Um, you know, uh, reptile breeding spectrum or reptile breeding discipline, however you want to phrase it. And um, to be honest, if I decided tomorrow that I didn't want to do this anymore, I would just not do it anymore. I'm not personally invested in anything aside from the animals themselves. And I think that's where there is a huge misconception between these other people and myself, or how they want to be portrayed on the internet and myself. Personally, I don't give any stock to how I'm portrayed on the internet because I have better shit to do. <laughs> you know, I work, I have a full-time job outside of this. I'm constantly going to school for new certifications for work. Um, I have uh, soon to be the world record holding BMW for half mile. Um, I build all that stuff. We race outside of here. Um, there's lots of other stuff that I do. So. Um, and a lot of people, uh, anybody who knows me can attest to that. So you're welcome to ask them if you don't have the balls to talk to me about it. But I'd be happy to have anybody over if they want to come check out the facility if they're in San Diego. I always have people come by and check out the animals as long as the females aren't nesting or I don't have a breeding going on. Um, I don't have a problem with bringing other people in. Um, it's just, uh, it, it is what it is for me. It's a hobby. If one day it ceases to be a hobby, then it will cease to be in my life. I mean, that's just how it is. Um, when I started out doing all of this stuff, I had the end goal of just building some of the nicest enclosures that an animal could have ever wanted, um, which, to be perfectly honest, wasn't a big task uh, in comparison to what my kind of ideas were about the enclosures and where the enclosures are in the general spectrum today of animal keeping. 
Um, with the exception of a few a few people, uh, Thai, Thai Park it has some amazing enclosures at Iguana Land. Um, Chris Murray uh, actually was one of the first people that I saw ever with a trailer load of huge tree branches, and uh, I still have that image in my mind. And uh, I've always been fascinated with having like big trees and logs and stuff in enclosures. And um, so, uh, you know, kudos to him. He put me on 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 uh, on notice as well when he did that. Um, there's a lot of people out there that have really good enclosures, but um, I think when it comes to being successful with your animals, it can only come down to you being successful with your animals. It has nothing to do with anything else. The internet, your wife, your kids, your obligations, it all comes down to you and your animal. That's it. I mean, it's simple logic. It really is. Um, regardless of you having all of the information in the world, you still have to do the work. Um, same thing on my end. I do the work. You know, that's why I'm so, I guess, easy to talk to when I do talk to people. Uh, you know, people are really surprised when they talk to me like, oh, wow, you're, you're, I didn't think you'd answer the phone or whatever. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know where that comes from. I have no idea. I can only imagine it comes from other people who don't take the time to talk to people for whatever the hell reason that is, whether they just want to say they're too busy so they can feel like they're busy and like their lives are, you know, more important than they really are. I have no fucking clue. I honestly have no idea. Um, I'm just not that way. I always subscribe to the idea that you're never too busy to do anything. Time is a renewable resource. You have to make it. So if you make time, you can do anything you want. Um, I used to be a personal trainer. I would go through the same thing with clients. Oh, I don't have time for the gym. How much time do you need? Well, I don't know. Well, then how the fuck do you know you don't have time at the gym? You don't even know how much time you need for the gym. You know, for here's what I want you to do. I want you to just go to the gym, walk around, and leave. That's it. I just want you to get used to just going to the gym. And then, eventually, you're gonna wanna stop and check out a machine, and that's a start. But just roadblocking the entire idea based on this preconceived notion that you have that's not based on anything at all is just ridiculous. I see the same thing in, uh, in reptile keeping all the time. So um, I know this was kind of a long rant and um, I just kind of wanted to get this stuff off my chest. And uh, you know, all in all, I still have fun doing this stuff. Uh, I enjoy the animals. Um, when I have new babies hatch, that's the most stressful time. Uh, that I have, and uh, it's always just because taking care of new babies, especially with the lace, and it's a species I've never hatched before, it's kind of uh, weird to try to just kind of figure out how they should be taken care of right out of the eggs. Generally, I try to recreate their incubation outside the incubator as best I can, so they can just kind of slowly phase into uh, keeping. Obviously, you don't want to hit them with a nighttime cool down right out of the uh, egg. Uh, a lot of times, you'll end up putting them into shock. Um, it doesn't necessarily kill the animal, but it can definitely slow down processes that would normally uh, speed up right away. Um, and um, so, you know, just keep that in mind. Um, if you guys really have legitimate questions and you're not getting responses from these other people, call me. I'll help you out if I can. If you're calling me about a species that I've never worked with, I will be the first to tell you that I haven't worked with the species, so I don't know. Um, I am not ignorant to the fact that other species of varanids act differently than other species of varanids. Case in point, croc monitors, lace monitors, water monitors, all totally insane and totally different. And I have all three of the hardest species to keep in captivity in one place right now, and I'm successful with all three. So that has to be a testament to uh, just the way that I keep the animal. Not necessarily a testament to my level of expertise and how much weight I could throw around on the internet if I wanted to just go virtue signal everywhere. Um, but it is a testament to the fact that I do enjoy this. I'm not doing this for the money. Um, 
you know, it, it is what it is. And uh, I know that all the people on my page and on our Facebook page, our Instagram page, our YouTube channel, all the people that matter, they can see that. So the other people that don't get that, I'm sorry to say, but your opinion obviously doesn't matter because you're not an expert in your field and you don't want to be one. I mean, anyone that can look at somebody else's enclosures and write them off completely um, without thinking that maybe they just need a helping hand um, is not a person that I want to hold their opinion of uh, on my end. And they're also not going to be a customer of mine. So I have no stock to be gained from investing in a person like that, which I think is the outlook you guys should take when you're taking advice or listening to people on the internet. If you have somebody who's giving you advice on a monitor, you go and look at their page and they keep bearded dragons. Obviously, there's not a uh, large crossover between uh, those two species. So you might want to just keep that in mind. Um, if you really have legitimate questions and you're working with the species that I'm working with, by all means, ask me. I'd be happy to do it. Cut out the middleman and uh, save your animal the aggravation of having to work through your learning curve. And uh, let me, you know, kind of steer you in the right direction. I have no problem doing that. Um, I literally go out of my way to try to do that. That is one of the things that adds to the fun factor on my end. So don't think that you're putting me out by asking me questions. I enjoy helping you guys out. That is why I'm here. And honestly, you're doing me a favor. If the things that I'm doing can be recreated in somebody else's space with less resources, then that's a testament to the information that I'm giving. Also, vice versa, if it doesn't work out well on your end, then I know that maybe my larger enclosures or larger resources are the reason uh, that those are working out. It's kind of a correlation versus causation, right? So um, the more I help you guys out, the more data I get back that validates the data that I have, which is always good for somebody who's a keeper who's constantly working to get better. I'm not gonna be the guy that wants to put out information all the time thinking that he has figured out this puzzle that is reptile keeping. Because I think there is always room for improvement in anything that you do. Reptile keeping obviously is one of those things. Especially when you're dealing with an entity like a reptile that doesn't necessarily have, um, I mean the animals do have personalities but they don't have really any other way to communicate aside from body language. So, and, and obviously biological uh, functions like uh, eating and digesting and stuff like that. So we're having to just use those simple diagnostic characteristics and simple, you know, visual cues to be able to figure out whether what we're doing is correct for the animal. And that's really, really hard to do. It's a lot of pressure on the keeper and I think that is the reason why a lot of these keepers don't uh, kind of branch out of their comfort zone because they have created a comfort zone where they know that their investment is safe regardless of whether it might only be, you know, producing 50% of its potential. They think 50% is more than zero and zero is a possible byproduct, byproduct of branching out of their comfort zone. So. For me, I've never really looked at it that way. I've always looked at there's always a better job I can do and the animals can always be doing better. It might not always produce better results on the breeding end, but the breeding end is not one of my goals uh, in, in the effect that I would make, uh, you know, in the effect that I would consider making a change to an animal's health just because I knew it would breed. Case in point, parthenogenesis, um, the first ever real study for parthenogenesis was done with Argus monitors and the way that they got them to produce parthenogenically was by stressing them out a ton. Whether it was dropping their food by more than 20 times, um, running the animals to exhaustion to where it put them in an actual survival state where they thought that they might die so they had to reproduce. And um, that is something that I refuse to do to produce animals parthenogenically. I now produce animals parthenogenically by um, a process of failed breeding. 
So if you can get a female to lock up with a male knowing that that male is infertile, you can produce a, a female who effectively thinks she's been bred and the biologics of that produce parthenogenic animals. Um, so there, there's like, uh, there's tons of different ways to reach the same finish line, if you will. Um, and uh, there, there's no real hard answer on how to take care of your reptile. It's all based on what you're willing to do as a keeper. There are a few very simple requirements things that you have to do in order to keep your animal alive. Um, everything else on top of that is just going to add on to the uh, well-being and the quality of life for your animal. So um, just make sure to keep all that stuff in mind when you're either soliciting for advice on the internet, which is a horrible idea. If you have a specific answer, you're going to get shit on for asking basic questions. Um, and my phone is always open. I'm not going to shit on anyone for asking me basic questions. I'll be happy to help you. I will, however, push you towards a, a care sheet or some other bit of information for you to look over first and then maybe call me back with some questions, um, which I'd be more than happy to help you. I'm not here to facilitate you not doing the work that you need to do, but I am here to help you um, with any roadblocks that you hit along the way. Um, and obviously, I'm not asking for anything in return of any of this, except that you go and do these things and maybe feed back to me what happens, you know. Um, I am interested in finding out what happens with your animals and if the information I'm giving you is worth its salt, you know. Um, so I know what works for me, but what works for me might not necessarily work for you, but that could be said for any of these breeders that are supposed experts. Um, so just keep that in mind, that all these animals are different, all these enclosures are different, all these other people's houses are different. The ambient in your house might be 10 degrees hotter than the ambient in my house, which means that the ceramic bulb that I'm using might be too hot for the ceramic bulb that you need to be using because your ambient temperature is warmer inside your house. Where I'm in this building, so we're regulated at 76 degrees down low and 86 degrees up high. So, um, you know, all those little things matter. I mean, a 10 degree difference in ambient in your enclosure might be the difference between digestion and septic. So, um, and sepsis. So, uh, just keep that in mind. There's a lot of variabilities. Get as much information as you can, but make sure it's quality information. Um, my door is always open, uh, so to speak. My cell phone um, is always around, 619-549-1508. Um, if anybody has any issues with the way I'm doing something or whatever, by all means, contact me. I'd be happy to talk to you about it. 100% um, of the time, it is a complete misunderstanding. Um, you have to understand, too, on the internet, there is no context. So. If you say something, uh, or if I say something on one of my posts, it's hard to tell whether I'm joking or being sarcastic. You know, a, a lot of times I'll make posts not really taking into account that I have 100,000 plus followers on Instagram, and I'll make a post that I think is funny because I have an inside joke with two of my friends, and, uh, and it comes off weird on your guys' end, and then the internet gets a hold of it, and they think I'm talking about, like, you know, some other breeder or something, it's, it's crazy, but, um, uh, but yeah, just keep all that in mind. I know this is a long video, there's a lot to listen to, um, but uh, all this stuff is for the animals. I mean, you can tell we're sitting in a huge enclosure with a waterfall and a river. I didn't do this for the money, <laughs> you know? There's a lot of money in here um, that I will you know, by all rights, never see on the back end, you know, and uh, that's fine. I didn't do it for the money. I did it for the animals and for myself. Um, you know, I had to put all the blood, sweat, and tears. Me, my friend Donald, and my friend Mark, we busted our asses and built this whole facility. So, um, we didn't do it for the money. There's, it's just an impossible thing to do for the money. Um, but uh, it is worth the investment, regardless. Um, even if there is no return on the investment of a monetary value, there is a return on, of an investment uh, with me, personally. And that's all I wanted. 
Um, and that return on the investment was paid in full the minute that we finished the facility and I got the animals in and they were happy. Um, so, you know, hopefully you guys got something out of this video. And uh, keep eating! Ah.